In this video, we're going to tie a stone fly called the Kaufman Stone. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take some nice thick lead wire. We're going to wrap it around the shank of the hook. And I'm going to cover the majority of the shank of the hook. I'm going to leave a little bit of room at the back and also a little bit of room at the front. And you want to use some pretty thick lead wire, either some 020, 025, or 030, kind of depending on the size that you're tying. Once I get to the head here, I'm actually going to take this lead wire and I'm going to wrap it back up onto itself. And I'm going to build a nice big heavy thorax kind of area. The stonefly, if you've ever looked at one, kind of has a big thorax compared to the rest of its body. That'll help us kind of build a general shape of the fly. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some tan thread. Now this fly can be tied in a lot of different colors. It can be tied in the golden variation, which is what we're going to be tying here. It can also be tied in brown, black. Those are probably the three most popular colors. I'm going to take my thread and just wrap through that lead wire. And I'm going to build a thread dam at the front and the back to just keep my body of the fly from sliding back and forth. Just kind of wedges it into place. I'll just wrap through that lead wire a few times just to make sure it's secure and it's not going anywhere. None of this has to be pretty at this point. We're going to cover all this up. Just needs to get the job done. And I'm going to take my thread to the back here. And we're ready to start with a little bit of dubbing. And for this I'm going to use some Golden Stonefly SLF dubbing. You can use a lot of different types of dubbing for this fly. Uh, but whatever dubbing you choose, you want it to be a fairly shaggy dubbing. You want it to have long fibers. Stone flies, if you ever noticed, are kind of leggy, big, bulky creatures, so shaggy dubbing really helps accentuate that on the fly. And we're just going to build basically a dubbing ball at the back end of our fly here. It's just a round ball of dubbing. And the idea is this is going to be a wedge for our tails. And I'm just going to use some goose biots for our tails. And I want the goose biots to splay away from the body. You can see that has a natural curve to it there. I want that curve to splay outwards from the body. And we want our leg to be about, a, or our tail, I'm sorry, about a quarter of the length of the body. You don't want to make these tails too long on a stone fly. They actually have fairly short little tails. We tie each of these in on the sides. Then you take your thread all the way back to that dubbing ball. You can see it helps split those tails nice for us. Then we can take our thread forward, trim out the excess. Now we're ready to tie in the rib. And for the rib, we're going to use a little bit of medium vinyl D-rib. We're going to tie this in along the side of the fly and stretch it as we wrap back. Go all the way to the tail there. We'll just let that hang off the back for now. Now there's a couple different ways you can do the body on these flies. You can either do a conventional dub like we did for the little dubbing ball. Or we can do a dubbing loop, which is actually the method that I prefer. We can add a lot more dubbing a lot faster with a dubbing loop. And I use a dubbing loop tool for that when that spins. And we're going to take some of our dubbing and just insert it into the loop a little bit at a time. I like to kind of stagger the dubbing so that it starts off a little thinner and then gets thicker as we move down the dubbing loop. That'll help us make the taper of the fly as well. And on a large stone fly like this, Usually you have to make a couple dubbing loops to get the job all the way done. 
just because it's such a long bodied fly. You can already tell that my first dubbing loop here isn't going to be quite enough to finish off the fly, so I'll just have to probably make another one. Another nice thing about the dubbing loop technique is you can see I get a nice shaggy body, which on this fly that's what we want. to make one little short dubbing loop again. We're not going to go all the way forward to that thorax quite yet. We're going to stop just short of it. Now we're going to stop, like I said, just short of that thorax there. And we're going to take our D-rib. We're basically going to segment the body with our D-rib. This will help create that natural segmentation that a stonefly has. Also help bind down that dubbing. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to trim three sections of turkey model turkey quills here. And I've taken three sections and I've trimmed them from large to small. So I've got my smallest there at the back, medium, then the largest one at the front. And I treat them with a little bit of Zappa Gap brush on super glue. You can also use uh, some flexible head cement that also works well. But what we're going to want to do is trim out little notches in these wing cases, just like that, just like a little stone fly would have. We're going to tie these in so that the casing sticks back about oh, a quarter of an inch or so on the first one here. You want it centered right on top of the fly. Let's try to do your best to get it centered there. Really bite down with your thread just like so. Then we can trim out the excess. Now we're going to take some more dubbing and for this step I actually don't usually use my dubbing loop technique. I usually just add it right on the thread really quick. So we're just going to build up these little segments here for our wing pads. And we're going to have to add three of them, three total, so two more. So you want to make sure to kind of plan out your spacing on the fly so that you don't run out of room. And you want to build up these little segments thicker than we did the body. That lead wire will really help bulk up those segments for us.
And then you can add the next wing pad. Again, just cutting those little V notches. And you'll want to slightly overlap the first one that you made, but you don't want to cover it. We're just basically going to stagger these wing pads. Just like that. See how I kind of staggered them? And the last one here will be the biggest wing pad. You'll really want to bulk up the head here. You're going to want to leave a little bit of room at the front. We still have to tie off the fly and also add some antenna, so you don't want to go all the way forward. And then again, that last wing pad will be the largest one. And you completely kind of engulf the top half of the fly with those wing pads. That's what we want. We'll do just a couple of wraps just to clean it up a little bit. Then we're going to tie in our front antenna. Same material as we use for the tails. Those goose biots. Again, we want them to splay away from the, hit, the, the hook, just as the ones in the back did. And then to finish off the head, we're going to take a little bit of dubbing again, and we'll just add it conventional style, just like we did the thorax. And if you're using a real shaggy dubbing that fights you a little bit, you can use a little bit of dubbing wax. That'll help you get it under control. And all this is doing is just kind of finishing off the fly and building a little tiny head, just as a stonefly would have. I add it to the thread very sparse. I don't add it in big clumps like we did on the, the body or the thorax. Very, very sparse at this point. Just enough to basically cover the thread. I'll take it all the way to the front. Once I get to the front, I can whip finish. I can even whip finish underneath those biots if you want them to stand up a little bit. Of 
And the last thing to do is to brush out the underside of the fly near the thorax. Basically what this is going to do is give the fly the leggy appearance. You don't want to brush out the body, kind of the back end. You want to do just the thorax, kind of the front portion. And it basically gives the fly the appearance of having legs as it moves through the water, just as the natural bug would have. If you have some longer fibers near the back, you can trim a lot of those out. The back end isn't supposed to be too shaggy. A few of them here and there though, it's not a big deal. And that is the Kaufman's Stone. Very effective stonefly nymph. It's uh, been around for a long time. I fished it when I was a kid, when I used to go up to Montana on the Madison. Very effective fly and still remains effective even to this day. And you can find all the materials to tie this fly on our website in theriffle.com.